In this lesson, you're going to learn all about blocks. You'll learn what they are, where they come from, and how to work with blocks. Now, you may have heard Gutenberg referred to as a block editor. Until you've worked with Gutenberg, it's not really clear what that means. Blocks are the foundation of the Gutenberg editing experience, and this lesson will inform all of our future Gutenberg training. So, if you watch no other lesson, watch this one. First, let's demystify blocks. Blocks are really just chunks of content. Now, that could be a paragraph of text, it could be an audio file, it could be a photo, a photo gallery, possibly even a video. Or it could be something more dynamic, like a list of posts. And you use blocks to build up your web pages and your posts. Now, in this course, we're going to learn about the standard blocks. Those are the blocks that are built into Gutenberg. Uh, those blocks are available to any WordPress website that uses the Gutenberg editor. But Gutenberg was created in a way that allows programmers to extend and expand available blocks. Blocks can also be added by plugins or themes. So it's entirely possible that you may have access to additional blocks besides the standard blocks we're looking at in this course. Now let's jump into WordPress and take a closer look at blocks and how they work. So we're in my test WordPress website here, and I've got this post that I created in Gutenberg, and I'm using the 2019 theme, and this is my featured image at the top. And if I scroll down to see the blog content, you'll see the post has uh, some text and an image and more images and more text. And you probably see a nicely composed page of uh, images and text. I see one, two, three, four, five different blocks. Uh, let's jump into Gutenberg and see how this page was composed. I'll click the edit post and that'll take us into the post editor with Gutenberg running. So here we are, that's the same page. And this Meet Gutenberg Blocks is the title. That's the post title. It's not a block, it's actually the title. So the title is required. Uh, everything else is pretty much optional. You use blocks in any combination you want to build the kind of content, make it look and work the way you want it to look and work on your website. Uh, so as I hover over these different parts of the page, you will see different controls pop up. This is a paragraph block. This is an image block. Further down, this is another paragraph block. In Gutenberg, every paragraph is a block. This is an image gallery block. And then this is another paragraph block. So we've got a series of blocks here, and together they make up this web page that we were just looking at. There are many ways to add a block in Gutenberg. Uh, you could add a block with the block control at the very top uh, here where you click the plus button and you uh, have then a big list of blocks that are grouped in these different drawers. We're gonna get into more detail on these in future lessons. Uh, or you could just press enter from any paragraph block and a new block gets added automatically. Now you will also see that same plus add block button and you can do the same thing that we did at the from the top menu. And you see the same list of blocks grouped in the same way. You also have uh, these little icons off to the right that are easy to miss. These are shortcuts for commonly used blocks. So you've got add heading, add gallery, and add image. And so you can click any of those and it will automatically convert the block to that block type. So I clicked heading and now this block has been turned into a heading. And from here I've got the toolbar where I can select which heading level I want. And when I type my text, I see it is big and bold and it's been formatted as a heading. Now another way to add a block is, say for example, I am in or have activated a block like this gallery, uh, the more menu, the more options menu, the three stacked dots gives me a couple of options. I can add before or after. So if I wanted to add a block immediately after, I would select that. And then I've got the new block uh, set up below this image gallery that I had been in before and I'm ready to create a block here. So that's another way to create a block. Uh, if you've been working in a block and you wanna create another block immediately before or after, you can do it from that more options menu. 
So one of the challenges I think we're all going to be facing sooner rather than later with Gutenberg is that the number of blocks are going to be really exploding uh, with plugins adding blocks and themes adding blocks and, and WordPress itself adding blocks. Uh, it's going to be very challenging finding the right block. And so when you go and click this add block button, uh, really you need to take advantage of the search box at the very top. You can search for blocks, typing image, and here I'm getting a list of all of the blocks that work with images. And it's everything from the gallery to a, st a standalone image, uh, media and text, which is a special kind of block we'll look at in a future lesson, but also embeds for things like Instagram and Flickr. So that search feature is really going to be your best friend as you're learning to work with Gutenberg. Uh, even as you become more experienced with Gutenberg, uh, search is going to be very important as we start seeing more plugins and more themes adding Gutenberg blocks. Uh, there are just going to be more blocks to deal with, and they're going to be harder to find. And I think we're going to get to the point pretty quickly where search is the main way for finding the right block at the right time. So after you've added a block, you may decide that you picked the wrong type of block and you may want to change it. And that's okay, you can do that. So let me show you how that works here with different block types because every block type can be changed, but there are certain limitations to how you can transform the block. So I've got this heading that I just entered. If I wanted to change this block, I would uh, place my cursor in the block so that I'm basically in editing mode. And the point is to see the toolbar. And the first tool here, if I hover over it, uh, you'll see this change icon. And when I click that, I see a list of blocks that I can choose from to transform this block into a different kind of block. So if I wanna make it a paragraph block instead, I can do that or I could turn it into a quote, which is a very specifically formatted type of text, or I can make it a cover, which is another type of uh, block that we'll look at in a future lesson. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna choose paragraph, and you can see that that heading gets transformed back into uh, a paragraph of text. And of course, I can always turn it back into a heading if I want to. Uh, now with another block type, uh, this image, for example, if I click the change block type icon, uh, I've got a different list of block types that I can transform it to. So I could change that single image to a gallery uh, or a cover uh, or a file, any kind of file that I want to upload or media and text. And again, we're going to go through these different block types in future lessons. Uh, so the point being is you can, you can change a block type after you have set it. Uh, but you are limited to a specific range of block types that are in some way related to what the original block type was. Now, there are times where you are going to want to move your blocks around after you've positioned them. And uh, that's very easy to do in Gutenberg. This is one of the nice things that is a lot more predictable and orderly than it used to be in the classic editor. Uh, with everything being a block, uh, it's just much more orderly in terms of how you organize them and position them. So I've got this header here. Let's say I want to move this down. Uh, basically, you just select the block. And once you select the block, you're going to see off to the side some controls that allow you to move. You've got move up, move down, and in the middle, you've got this kind of grabby thing. I think that's the technical term for it, grabby thing. And if you click and hold, you can then drag the block into position. And when you release the mouse button, uh, your block will be moved to the new location. But the up and down work pretty well. So I'm clicking down here to move up and down. And you'll go up or down one block at a time. So either one of those ways is uh, how you would move your blocks around on the page once you've positioned them. Now the final thing you might want to do, kind of a basic block activity, is getting rid of a block. Uh, not every block is gonna make the cut when you're ready to publish. You might wanna actually delete something. And the way to do that is to highlight the block. When you see the toolbar, it's for more options again. Click more options, and at the very bottom, you've got an option to remove the block. 
and then your block is gone. And that's the way you remove a block. So that's a quick introduction to working with Gutenberg blocks. So those are the basics that you'll be doing most of the time when you're in Gutenberg. You will learn a lot more by getting your hands on Gutenberg and experimenting with blocks. I encourage you to create a test post or a test page and begin working with blocks and getting a feel for just the basics, the basic mechanics of how Gutenberg works with blocks. Uh, you've had the introduction now. I think you're equipped to start building your own pages, so I encourage you to do that.